Yeah. I'm J.R. Fleming, um, Chicago Anti-Eviction oh, Campaign, yeah. Take Back the Land, Chicago, Occupy the Hood, Southside Together, Organizing for Power. Okay, and uh, uh, what is happening here? Uh, well, there's been a, um, an imminent closure of the clinics, and one of the things we wanted to do was have a presence out here to say that the people out here are not giving up, and that's the consumers of the mental health clinic movement. We also wanted to say that this movement is just starting. It's not in it anytime soon, and our hopes today was to set up a tent city, erect a tent city, and have a physical presence to defend this clinic here. Um, well, thanks to the city, the Chicago Police Department, and um, Dr. Finney, who owns a lot, um, they're totally opposed to us taking this type of activity and totally opposed to um, keeping this clinic open, which means that they are totally in support of violence in our community because closing this clinic is going to leave a lot of people who are most vulnerable to the mental health community out here in the streets where a lot of crime and violence is arising, especially noting that the summer is on the way. Okay, and uh, what is the status of what's going on right now as far as you know? Minute to minute, the police have threatened us with imminent arrest and eviction from this site. Okay, thank you. you are. The people too, we are united free. The occupation is not leaving. Since the economic crisis began in 2008, 30,000 fewer mental health patients are being seen in the community. Funding has dropped 22% from both public and private clinics. In order to do something about this, instead of doing something about this, the city of Chicago has completely put its head in the sand like an ostrich and has decided to get out of the business of providing health care for the community. What do we think about that? <laughs> As community mental health block grants for the uninsured, are being threatened completely as places like the Woodlawn Mental Health Center are shuttering its doors, as places like the counseling, private clinics like the Counseling Center of Lakeview are slashing their outpatient departments from six therapists to one, as places like C4 haven't been, are owed $10 million by the state of Illinois in uh, Medicaid uh, money, which they refuse, which the state doesn't have the money to pay. We're out here symbolically and physically to defend our right to health care. That's right. Health care is a human right. We won't go without a fight. We won't go without a fight. Health care is a human right. Congressman Danny Davis came by to get his blood pressure checked. We had a health fair here today. The alderman of the 20th Ward, Willie Cochran, came by. He uh, said that the resolution to get a public hearing about this mental health clinic closing is still in effect, and they are gathering signatures of aldermen as we speak. So why is it that the Chicago Police Department, when Congressman Danny Davis came by this health fair and this rally to support health care, when the aldermen of this ward came by this, this uh, health care rally and, and vigil, why are they trying to uh, shut us down? Another thing, we know from the White House to Barack Obama's home court, here where he was a state senator not too long ago. We know we've been fighting for health care. Why is it that we can elect a president from this ward, from this Illinois State Senate District, but we can't keep our clinics open? Is that right? No! Is that right? No! Is health care a right? Yes! All right. I'm going to introduce Madonna Carter, a leader, fearless leader of the mental health movement.
Nadonna Carter, I represent everybody because I'm a consumer. That's right. There was a time when I had a great job, but when I fell apart, I fell and I went to the public health clinics because that helped me not die. Suicide was a plan. There are hundreds of thousands of people in this city, in this country, that think about suicide every day. We are one breath from it. Because we have the opportunity to go to these public health clinics when we don't have money, we are able to be saved. Private health clinics provide nothing for you if you can't afford to go there. It is the city's obligation to take some of the money that they collect from us and provide services. Yes. On Thursday, we were at our damn moment. We have written letters, given the mayor 700 letters, 4,000 letters at a separate time, letting him know that the citizens across the city want these clinics kept open and safe. The mayor ignored us. We have people and children that are being treated at some of these clinics because the parents are in jeopardy. Those children's lives are changed and made safer. When we've gone to the clergy, they turned their backs on us most of the time. Father Flager is more interested in walking children to school. When we went to him, the mental health movement, and we told him that walking kids to school is not the issue, the issue is keeping those children that feel like shooting and killing keeping them safe and getting them mental health treatment. That's right. His position was, well, that's not on my list. When I was arrested, I was the only woman that was molested by a white police officer. He did a body search on me. And when I questioned why are all of the other women given women, no one said anything. He just told me to spread my legs. And I did what I was told. My hands were behind my back. But if I was violent, if I had acted just one second, I would have been shot. Because as a black woman, I had no value. But as a mental health patient, I have none. So this man pulled his hands up in my crotch, touched my butt and my breast. And that's OK with Mary Manuel, because I'm a mental patient. This is the test of what will happen if the police who are not trained to deal with mental illness are forced to deal with people that have mental health problems if they don't have their medication and if they act out and if they hit a cop or they kick a cop or spit on them, they're going to react because cops are human beings too. First, and they'll shoot you and they'll hit you and they'll kick you and they'll kill you. And Mary Manuel's response to that is just get more cops and kill those crazy people because they need to go to jail. Jail is not the answer. We need more mental health clinics. Not less. We need more. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Horace Howard. I'm a consumer at Woodline Clinic. We all understand that health care is a burden on our federal, state, county, and local budget. But if you can raise enough money in a billion dollars to put an African American in the White House, you can come up with three million dollars to solve this health care problem uh -huh. with one fixed in the budget and then we can decide on trying to make it a permanent fixture. Right now you got people coming out of prisons. They have not been rehabilitated. They have mental issues. You got people coming home from Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. They have mental issues. They have to get back into the mainstream of society. Without this three million dollars, that you can raise to, put, to increase health care, you're going to have a higher increase in incarceration. You're going to have emergency visits in the hospital rooms. These policemen, they law enforcement is going to be more intervention. We need mental health 
services. We need them holistically to solve the public health problem, the public education problem, and the public safety problem. Rahm Emanuel, we trying to work with you. All you have to do is hold this hearing on health care, and through this hearing, come up with an amendment to the budget of $3 million. We're asking you, we're participating in the political process in a civil fashion. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Linda Hatcher, and my name is Linda Hatcher. We need Emmanuel, Emmanuel Mayor. All about Okay, we need the mayor to help us out to keep all these clinics open. We need, we really, really, really need these clinics open. We need help. We need, you know, there's so many people that's out here on the street that has a problem, and we need, we need support. We need, need the people. We need him. If he's any kind of a mayor, he would try to support. He would try to help us, help us to do better, live better. He's saying he's trying to help the kids. But we need the parents so we can get us be, be together. If he help us get ourselves together and keep these clinics open, we can support the kids. We can try to help so many kids from dying, help, help the community, clean the community up, all that shooting, stop the shooting, stop the killing, yeah. and everything. Yeah. We, can, we can all work together. We can be together. And we can stop crying. We can stop all of this. And we work together and do what we, what was necessary for us to do. We can do it. We can. It ain't no such thing as we can't. We can. And I am a member, and I go over there to the board of mental health center over here at Woodline. I'm gonna miss this clinic so much. And they should have really kept this clinic open. They should have kept it open. I'm hurt. I'm hurt, and I and, and I'm, I'm, I don't even know which way to go or which way to turn. They should have kept it open. They put me in jail and everything. But you know what? Like I said, I don't mind going back to jail. <coughs> I don't care. And which, you know what I'm saying, where I'm coming from? Because it's a whole lot of people. They're going to wind up going to the Cook County Jail. They're going to go to the Cook County Jail. They're going to wind up getting the medicine. They're going to get back out here on these streets. They're going to wind up people, going to get hurt and everything. Just like over there on King Drive, where I just come from, in my neighborhood. They had shootouts and everything over there today. If it wasn't for me calling 911 to try to stop the shoot and stop the killing and everything over in the neighborhood, some, somebody would wind up getting killed or getting dead. My daughter, my grandson right here, Alfonso, he, he, was, him, he was in South, he was him, his mother and all of them, they're walking down the street and, and they got the shooting and everything. And they come in, mama, they drop food, everything behind them and everything and stuff. I got on the phone, called 911 because, hey, if we don't parents stick up, help our kids, help our kids to do, to help them to get their life together, stick by our kids and, and try to clean this neighborhood, clean this area up, it's gonna be so much of killing. It's gonna be so much stuff going on over here in, the, in every neighborhood over here. We need some help. We need some support. And when they closed this clinic down over here, we had a lot of support over there. We had mental health doctors, we had therapists, we had so many people that's gonna help us and everything. But by they taking this here out of the neighborhood and the people that's over there got problems and everything, it's gonna be, it's gonna create more problems. We need some help. We, I mean, you know, we, need, we really need to clean it up. We need support. And the only way we're going to get that support and help is that everybody stand by each other, stick by one another, help one another, reach out for one another. You know, we really need that support to try to help keep the clinic open. And the biggest mistake that they ever could do was close this clinic down over here, especially over in this neighborhood. That's why I come. They said, we said, fight back. I'm going to fight back. I'm not going to give up. Yeah. Yeah. I went to jail, and I'm willing to go to jail again. I don't care. I don't care. I got my grandson. I don't want nothing to happen to him or anything. 
I want, I want, I want, I want my grandson to sit up there, you know, be safe when he's walking out here in these streets. I want my grandson, my grandbabies, and everybody else kids in this neighborhood and, and other neighborhoods. I want them all, I want them all, you know, I don't want nothing to happen to them. I want, I want, I want us all to come together. I want us to be, stick together, be together, and everything. But they should have kept that Board of Mental Health Center over there open. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just another instance where resources are being taken away from my community. Resources that I need. Uh, Rahm Emanuel doesn't seem to think that that's something that he should invest in. Resources in our community. He's closing these mental health clinics and it's going to have a major impact in our community. I can guarantee you that it will be a surge in the number of people with mental illnesses that are arrested. So the new mental health clinic will become 26 in California because these people cannot receive services. We need, we need these services in our community. We need investment in our community. We do not need more police officers in our community. That's the wrong place to invest the money. They do not help the problem. We need resources. We need uh, mental health clinics. We need therapists. We need counselors. We need social workers in our community to work with, these, to work with our community. I was one of the people that was locked up the other day um, for barricading ourselves inside this mental health clinic. And while I was in lockup, I talked to a young man who was on his way to the county. And this young man is dealing with an immense amount of trauma from things that he experienced in his community. Yeah. He doesn't need to be locked up in the county. He needs somebody, he needs a therapist. He needs somebody to sit down and talk with him through the issues that he's faced with. He, he, he was shot and his girlfriend was shot right in front of him. He don't need to go to jail. He needs mental health services. But these services are being taken away from us. They're being taken away from us slowly but surely. Our communities are being stripped of anything and everything that will help us to be a better community. And what does Rahm Emanuel say about that? Give them more police. And they are not helping the problem. As you all can see, more and more police officers are pulling up at the scene right now to remove us from this peaceful action. We've been here all day barbecuing as a community, eating as a community, talking as a community. We haven't done anything to provoke the police. We haven't done anything to provoke anyone. We haven't caused any disturbances, but yet and still, more police cars are pulling up to remove us off this property and kick us off because Mayor Emanuel does not want our voices to be heard. He does not want the world to know that he is stripping our community of resources and putting more police in our communities, something that's not going to help. We spent 14 hours in lockup, yes, in lockup yesterday, and I can guarantee you that nine of those hours, the officers that arrested us were sitting down, talking, laughing, giggling, ordering lunch from Clark's. Is that why our taxpayer dollars should go? No. They should go into this mental health clinic to help the people that need the service. Right. Hello, my name is Rocky Witherspoon. I, I, I don't belong to this clinic, but I belong to Inglewood. And it's getting overcrowded by people coming in there with appointments. And we they just put got really one doctor and put another doctor in. And I don't understand that. And uh, my experience with Mental Health Center, I I I've been I got sick in 1987. And uh. I didn't, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I said nothing went wrong with me, but it was. It was something wrong with me. It was that I needed mental health treatment. And, uh, we need we need uh, support from the mental health clinic. I was arrested. The policeman put, hit me upside the head with a gun, freaked on my clothes. It was a man that did it, man, policeman that did it. And uh, threw me in jail, told me I, I rather, forced me, forced me to sign a, 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 a complaint against me. And I didn't need that. I need to be in the mental hospital.
And uh, that's all. All right, all right, guys. I'm Kingsley Clark. I'm a lawyer. We yeah, have an update on the police negotiations here. Can everyone listen up, please? Go ahead. No, from you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they say, the police, that we don't have a right to be here. But they have no complaint. They have no victim. They have no witness. We have permission to be here from the owners. Obviously, they're confused about what they're trying to do. But they had told us we have to leave. We're not going to leave. Consumers at the mental health clinics here in Chicago. My name is Nadonna Carter. I spoke already. Linda is going to speak now because Dr. Reverend Leon Finney owns this lot. He is pre. He owns the bad lot over there. He doesn't own the lot we're on. He doesn't own the lot that we're on, but he owns the one next to it, and he's prepared to file charges against us for being here. And what you should not be trying to charge no charges against us. Because you know, we are God's kids. We are God's people. And I feel that he's wrong. Why would he, if he's a preacher, if he's a preacher, why would you want to do something like this to us? When we're trying to help clean this neighborhood and help him, if he, if he got any kind of uh, opportunity and everything, and it's stuff like that, he gonna try to put us in jail? You we know are what? the people. We are the that people. go to his we church. We go to his church. We represent, we, uh, we represent his congregation. Yes, we do. Uh, they are neighborhood people. He is down the street from where I live. I have visited his church. I have put money in his basket when he's begging for it. And I feel it is important. These people here all have children. The people at his congregation need mental health treatment yes and he should they even, need to be saved and he knows that that we need to be saved and i feel what kind of preacher is he what kind of preacher is he what kind of preacher is he when he gonna sit up there and lock us up and and do this do the, do what he doing to us that is very yes. wrong he shouldn't do this to us you know what i'm saying if he if really, he's supposed to be a guy's child right. or stuff like this here and he, and he, he asked us to come to church and we worship God and everything. He's not supposed to take, sit up there and try to harm God's children. Okay. But he got, want okay. us to put money in his basket and help him to clean the neighborhood, help everything and stuff like this here. You don't do that. You don't do that. That's wrong. You know, that's very, very wrong. I'm like, if you love God and everything, hey, you, you, I love God. I'm for God. I'm like, hey, you know, don't do this to me. Don't do this to our people. You know, Lord have mercy. We Jesus. are asking don't do this. Leon, Leon, Finney, Leon to have the courage I hope he has and it. the conviction of a pastor in a church that is in a very poor community. And he knows it's a and poor community. And people from his congregation Lord. represent the very people that he is willing to put in jail. We are asking Dr. Finney to have a heart and be a decent person. I pray because we Saturday. know that he has a Let congregation made of people that Let are struggling away. and suffering. Let me away. Do not pass charges against us. And I pray and put it in God's name and hope that Thank he does you. not. I hope he does not does what he say he gonna do if he have a heart. These services, you know, God, these don't services, let him do it. these services, these mental health services that we are looking for, they're not just for now. They're for the future. We all know about the violence that's going in the community. We see one kid kill another kid. 
that's kids gonna need services in the future. This, see, these are the services they're talking about cutting. You just had a shooting down on King Drive today, they're shooting. These kids need therapy. If they continue to kill each other, they're gonna need therapy down the line. We have a war zone going on now. We have no structure. When the projects went and they got demolished, the gang structure left. They took away the leaders. They used that money to go up to the top to redevelop the city in property, but they did not redevelop the children. We need these services to help the kids. That's why we need them for the future. They parents need these services to raise the kids. We just asking you, collaborate with us, call on the hearing, let's get together and let's get this money in the budget by amending it and provide these services for the community. It's for us. Thank you. Just a quick update. The update is that since the media got here, the police are not arresting us at the moment. We're afraid when the media leaves, they may, so we hope the media can stick with us. They have orders all the way from the very top from the superintendent to evict us and to arrest us all from this land, which for those of us who were arrested yesterday will mean a long time in jail. Uh, so we hope that you all can stay with us. We're going to continue to hear testimony from those who were arrested yesterday, those affected by this, and those who have stood in solidarity. Sophie, go ahead and say. Hi, good evening. Woo! Woo! Yeah. My name is Sophia Korchmar. I'm a student at the university. I'm an ally of STOP, an ally of the mental health movement. I am a young person who cares about the future of my city. This is a question about the priorities of our city. This is a question about who we care about. This is a question about why, when the city of Chicago has $20 million left over in surplus from snow removal, when the city of Chicago has $65 million left over from G8, when the city of Chicago could raise taxes on a few of the wealthiest by, uh, by starting a yacht tax, as was proposed by Alderman Cochran, why we cannot find the $3.3 million to keep these clinics open for one whole year and why we cannot find the $6 million that would keep them open and better and improved for the services that we need in our communities. This is a question not about the city of Chicago being broke. This is a question about who the city of Chicago thinks is valuable. I think that these people are valuable. That's right. I think that the people who got arrested yesterday, who barricaded themselves in that building, are some of the bravest, most fantastic, most incredible, most contributing citizens of this city that I know. I think that they matter. And when the mayor sends cops to arrest us for protesting and for articulating that we have a right to services which the city of Chicago can afford. He tells us that our democratic rights are not valuable and that we are not valuable, and that is unacceptable. local tenant leader and a friend of this, a strong fighter for her community who was arrested last night, Sonia Moore. this clinic because I have a lot of friends who attend this mental health clinic. They're in need of, they're not here because they're either unable or disabled. So I'm here to stand up for them to keep this clinic open. We need this clinic. This clinic has been through a lot of changes from prenatal care 40 years ago when I was going there to mental health care. This clinic has endured a lot, a lot of changes and everything, and it can continue to. The mental health we need this here. We're getting more and more mental patients that they're, they're, they're developing from any and everything that the government is putting up. It's turning them this way. We need this. Emmanuel needs to get out here, stand up and say, yes, I'm going to stand up and fight for these people who need this. The one can afford to pay for expensive care for their health. 
This is all we have in our neighborhood and others in the neighborhoods that they want to close. This we need badly. So please support us. All right. Thank you. I'm not too young, you fight for our rights. Right. 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 Everybody was doing close knees clinic is wrong. He's taking away our health care stuff that we need. You can do it, That's right. So fight for your rights, no matter how young you are.
Do it. Because I am Do it. severely mentally ill. When I tell you when I lived in them Dearborns, when I first saw them Dearborns, I was four years old, and I was scared to death. I was scared. I said, Mama, for the life of me while we got to live here. And my mama said, baby, this is all I could afford. And her name is Odessa Johnson. Odessa my Marlene mama. Johnson. That's and she's mama. deceased because she died from mentally illness. My sister right now is on the road on crack and heroin. We can't even find her. And I just, by the grace of God, found Joshua. Thank you, Lord. We got my brother. He's back at home. I got another brother in Colorado. I got another brother in Colorado Springs. He's an entrepreneur. He's doing well. And I have a sister in Indiana, Gary Maryville, Indiana. She's doing good. But Janae lost all her kids. When I say all of them, after my mama died, that baby got six kids. And she died. One of them died. I got to find them because I don't know where they at. God's going to help you to find them. Yeah, God will. Yeah, I know he will. I know he will, sister. God's going to help you. My name is Eliza Salovier. I have received life-saving treatment at our Chicago Public Mental Health Centers. Yesterday, we experienced what Ram has in store for us. Instead, <laughs> bless you. Um, he wants us to go from the clinics to the jails, and that's exactly what he did. We saw a fast-forward version of that yesterday, and the tragedy is the police are not prepared to take care of the mentally ill. We need our clinics. We do not need to be handcuffed and put into jails in conditions that intensify conditions like anxiety, psychosis, and the other things that we have to deal with. Rahm Emanuel, you are a root cause of the violence that we are experiencing on these streets. Yeah. When you are choking yeah. these neighborhoods, yeah. the same ones you're shutting the clinics down are the same ones you're shutting the schools down. You're not providing jobs like past mayors have, and you are choking the resources. Everywhere in the history of the world where there is street violence, civil war like this, it is where the government is not taking care of its people. Rahm Emanuel needs to prioritize human rights like these city mental health clinics, and he needs to prioritize what the people need. And he, let, he needs to let the aldermen represent us and our interests and not his financial interests for future campaigns and whatever his friends need to make money off of. We need Rahm Emanuel to admit and to accept that he has made a mistake and there is time to correct it. We will work with you to amend this budget. Give this community a place to be part of the decisions that affect us. Please, before it is too late, there is time right now and we are willing at any minute yeah. to work with you. Until then, we are not leaving here. We have the right to occupy our own minds, our own health, our own communities, and you will not take us from this right. Thank you. ago to demand that you give people health care so you would not throw them in jail. When they stood up to it, you threw them in jail. Yes. Yep. You arrested people. You, sh you had people shoved outside. Beat and I got three words for you. Round two, Rom. Yeah! Oh, you okay? Oh, okay. Not again. Oh, you looking at me? <laughs> You know, it's a sad, it's a sad day, as I was saying earlier, when in the same neighborhood, in the same neighborhood that elected Barack Obama as a state senator, that elected, that propelled him to the U.S. Senate, and then propelled him to the White House, the same ground. Why, if we can have health care reform for the health insurers and big money for big pharma, why can't we have clinics in our community. Yes. 
Now, we won't sit, we will not sit silently and end up on the streets, in the hospitals, and in jail because we cannot get primary care in our communities. The whole point of health care reform was so that we could keep this clinic here open, that we could keep Providence Hospital open, that we could keep Cook County open, that uninsured people like the ones you see around here like myself, uninsured people like myself so that we could get dental care, that we could get psychiatric care and psycho psychological services. This isn't just a south side issue though, this is also a north side issue, this is a northwest side yeah. issue, this is a southwest side yeah. issue, this is a universal yeah. issue, yeah. because we are, all, yeah. we are all human beings, and we all deserve the right to life. Thank you, that's all I have to say for now. I'm only going to speak for a moment, but I thought it was important to speak up for some people who couldn't be here tonight. Thank you. This past year, I lost a friend. He suffered from severe depression, and he ultimately took his own life. Medication and proper counseling could have saved him. He was one of the most talented and generous and good-hearted people I've known. He was there for me more times than I can count. And when we lose people like that, the world becomes a sadder place for all of us. Yes. And that desperation, it shouldn't go unanswered. But we should be there for our fellow human beings. Yes. Yes. That's what we should be about as a city, as a people. Yes. 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 We, need more people. yes. we need to help each other. Yes, Lord. And we need to fight for that principle. Yes, we need to stand for that, because yes, if we don't stand we now, they're going to take all of that away from us. Yes, We're going to be run on corporate principles. We're going to be run for money and not for the people. We are the people. If we take back our power, if we demand change, we can have it. Yes, we can. And we don't have to lose people like my friend. Yes. We don't have to lose them. The need for care is increasing, not decreasing, and yet we are pushing out people that are already getting care. There is no excuse for that. It is unforgivable, and it has to be corrected. It can still be made right. Yes. We have to do that. Yes. Services that I need, 
And there are many, many other people at the university, in the community, more people than you would expect that suffer from mental illness, who do have insurance, who don't have insurance, who won't soon have insurance. And there is no difference. We should all have the right to mental health care. My name is J.R. Fleming. I'm a human rights organizer with the Chicago Anti-Eviction Campaign, and one of our sister organizations is the South, South Siders Together Organizing for Power. Over the last eight, nine months since the birth of the Occupy movement, there has been a clear abuse by the mayors of various cities when it comes to occupying public space. There seems to be a problem in America right now. They're evicting people from schools. They're evicting people from health clinics. They're evicting people from homes. Where are the people to go when they cannot occupy land, public land? So we're asking the mayor of Chicago, state officials and federal officials, if you're not going to give a person a home to go to, a school to go to, or a clinic to go to, at least let them occupy some land. These tents are going to become commonplace in America because if you don't have a home, where are you to go? So, Mayor Emanuel, you are being put on notice. These tents will be everywhere real soon. I don't know. I was one of the parents from the city from Whittier, and I'm here to support because health and education is the priority, and it's something that you need, and it's just a right because you're a human being. I am here. I did a sit-in for 43 days. I'm here to support everybody here because that's all we all need to do: support each other. Yeah. I was yeah. fighting for education. I'm still fighting for education. They still haven't sat with me, but that's okay. We'll still continue fighting. I will be here, and we'll need to support education and health. It's a birthright. Mm -hmm. This is just comes with you. And Emmanuel, do something. I thought you, you have money to rebuild the city for what? For stupid things like NATO or some things like that? Come on. This is people that are sick. Do you know why they're sick? Because you send them to war. They're in, in, in a war that you, you're sitting down, and they're fighting. They come up. Bad. They need milk. They need health. They need to be. Re they see so many stuff in work. What else do they need? This is our life. This is life of kids, adults. We all pay taxes. Where is it? Where's the education for our kids? We're also fighting for education. This is stupid. I'm sorry, but this is stupid. If you're supposed to be a professional, I'm a parent. With no, no professional, I did not go to college, but I have more common sense than all of you politicians. You yeah. 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 community. The continuous stripping of public resources that would help the 
most or meet the most basic needs of everyday people is just continuously being eroded as if it has no impact on everyone's individual lives as well as the lives of us as a collective. We sitting here in a community where people consistently complain about it's changing or the violence or the various things that are going on that we don't like and we want to bring about some type of change. However, it seems that we don't get credence that people act a certain way because they think a certain way. And if they think off, then they're going to act off. Here we are, one of the few mental health clinics on the south side of Chicago that's being closed that has a positive impact on how people think, which then has a positive impact on the way that people act. And beyond that is just numbers of people that need the services who make use of the services in a way that it just doesn't impact them as an individual, but it impacts their family, it impacts their children, it impacts the schools and places where anyone that they're connected to is connected to because of them and where it starts at. So I'm just here and I want to be able to make sure that we're going to be here. If we got to come in shifts every hour on the hour, it's enough people, we're going to stay out here, we're going to make sure that this clinic stays open and that we open other things that are needed for our communities to be as positive as they possibly can. So that's my piece. Save our clinics. 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 so we can throw the money to you guys. And what happened to Mayor Daly? He became a partner of the law firm that negotiated the parking meter deal. Well, what, what do we have? Another insider in government selling the city to his private investors. We say fight back. And again, just what, what uh, Sophie was referring to, one of the therapists here earlier shared that there's already patients being turned away. She's, she hasn't slept, that we had blood pressure monitors out here. They took her blood pressure and recommended she go to an emergency room. And the reason that she's at that level of stress is because her patients were sent to another clinic where there wasn't a Spanish-speaking psychiatrist, and they were turned away. And now many of them are at the point of suicide. They are suicidal. We are not joking when we say lives will be lost if this goes forward, and we are not joking when we say that blood will be on Rahm Emanuel's hands if this goes forward. So that's why we're willing to stay here. If any of us, the 23 of us who were arrested yesterday, get arrested again today, we're in jail until May 1st when we have our court dates. And we're willing to stand here and yeah. say that we're going to make that happen if Rahm Emanuel insists on arresting and using police resources towards that instead of using a few measly percentage points of his budget to provide basic services. Are we going anywhere? No! Are we going anywhere? No! Clinics under attack. What do we do? Stand up! 
just want to talk to you about what happens with medication when people are put in prison. Last night, we had a woman that had heart disease and the police refused to release her or give her medication. Twice, she tried to get her medication. She has heart disease and she needs to take the medication twice a day. So at the end of the day, because she had been arrested, there was no hope of getting the medication. In the morning, they wouldn't give her medication. They wouldn't release her. They said, well, you know, we'll get an EMT in here, but first we have to get permission to get an EMT. This was the special unit that was trained for people with mental health issues. We were all middle-aged. Well, two people were 26 and 28. Everyone else was from 50s, late 50s to late 70s. They refused to give us our medication. Finally, my condition became so advanced that I could barely walk, I was losing consciousness, and after three hours of begging, they finally gave me my, allowed me to take my medication. But let's imagine this is someone who can't talk and is struggling with mental illness. The police are not trained to administer medication and they can't legally give medication. So they'll let you die in your cell because they don't want to lose their jobs. That's a big deal. It's not just a common sense issue. It's a big deal that a lot of people are going to die. If they don't die from being beaten, they're going to die because they won't get their medication. Everyone doesn't carry their medication with them. Sometimes the medication is at home. And if you get arrested because you're acting out, you don't have your medication with you and you may die. Because along with mental illness, a lot of people have health problems like heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. And within the mental health community, there are most of the cases, especially the more advanced, have high blood pressure. So they won't give you food for 12 hours, and we were in at least 12 hours and no one got food. And when we take our medication, we're supposed to eat. Now we have people right now that are part of the mental health movement that are threatening to go on a hunger strike. They will die. Because with this medication, the psych medication, you are usually required to eat you are usually required to drink. And if you don't have liquids, you become dehydrated and you can die. Our challenge is that people have already started dying. Since the, the budget was passed in November, we've had three suicides. The day the budget was passed, a mental patient jumped from a platform on a blue line to an oncoming train. The death train has already arrived. But because Mary Manuel does not take the bus, he doesn't even recognize or acknowledge that people that he's paid to serve are dying. Every single day we get stories, and I'm, I run part of the mental health hotline for Southside Together Organizing for Power. We get calls from people that are looking for medication and mental health therapy. We got a call from a young man that was 24 years old that was put in prison when he was 21 and going to college because the police decided that he was guilty. And so he did plea bargaining because he was told he was gonna be in prison for the rest of his life because they claimed he had robbed a pizza guy. The pizza guy said it wasn't him. Long story short, he ended up in prison. And now he has mental health problems. He wanted to know where he could go and where he could get the medication that was prescribed to him. We had to try and help him find it. We couldn't. We sent him to a public health clinic, but they didn't have a drug assistance program. There's no drug assistance program. The mayor doesn't even want a drug assistance program. So people that are getting out of prison and they are required to seek mental therapy, they can't go to a private provider because they don't have money. They can't get medication because they can't afford it. They will rob you, shoot you, kill you, so they can go back to jail 
and get medical treatment. The medical treatment in prison, let's be clear, is just medication to keep you numb. It is not therapy. So when these young men and women come out of prison, they have more mental health problems than they did before. I don't know how many of you know that the GI Bill does not cover the National Guard. And in Illinois, more than 20,000 National Guardsmen were sent to Iraq. They have come back to Chicago and they have no health care. They go to the Cook County Hospital. The Cook County Hospital will only treat you one time if you have mental health problems, one time. They'll give you medication one time. But the city of Chicago is telling people that not only will service be better, but they have more choices. They can go to the county hospital. They don't know that therapists are telling people if you go there, they'll only treat you once. Consumers are telling us they'll only treat you once. So where will they go? If they don't go there, they're going to go to prison. And right now, all you have to do is breathe heavily and you'll go to prison. There'll be more people that will kill or be killed because they have mental health problems by the police than ever before. We have an epidemic right now. We cannot afford to lose any more people. The National Guardsmen have nowhere to go but the public health clinics. They have served this country. And they come back and the country says, damn you, because rich folks don't want you to be taken care of. Chicago is not broke. If Chicago was broke, Chicago couldn't give tax rebates to the very wealthy. The state of Illinois is not broke. If the state of Illinois was broke, they wouldn't give $100 million in tax rebates to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. When you're broke, you walk a mile to save that car fare. When you're broke, you don't give away $100 million. <laughs> we need people to call their aldermen, to call the mayor, to call all the legislators that they know and tell them how important these clinics are to everybody. The city cannot be safe if only one person is sick because of mental health issues. The city cannot be safe. Everyone has the opportunity to touch another one's life, either kindly or violently. It is up to the city to make the decision how this is going to play out. We have done so much. We have given the mayor 4,000 letters from taxpayers and citizens and visitors letting the mayor know how important the mental health clinics are and have been and how valuable they are. We did a sit-in. The mayor ignored us. We had a town hall meeting packed with 300 people at Mercy Hospital. Dr. Shuker, the commissioner for the health department, Boom. two hours before the event, had someone email us and tell us he couldn't make it. We have done everything we can. We have sat in meetings and begged and pleaded. We have written books. We have given testimony. We've done research. Thursday was not an accident. Thursday was not our first act. This is a three-year process where thousands of people, we have people as far as New Hampshire that have called us and said we support you. We showed them the report, the city council. We let them know about the report in North Carolina in 2001 closed all of their public health clinics. In 2008, they did a report on what it cost the state after closing the public health clinics. $400 million in that time was spent on police, hospitalization, crime. All of that's gonna happen, but Chicago and Illinois, 
damn, we got a lot of people and a lot of people are angry. It's going to be more than $400 million. And by the way, the city is now spending over a half a million dollars in security detail, our dime, having the police guard each one of the 12 mental health clinics. We're not going to do an occupation again. Hell, we did that. So we're not going to do that. But what is the question? They've got a half million dollars to spend our money to have the police sit around talking and chatting, doing nothing, not saving any one of us. But they're going to sit in front of the mental health clinics so we can't occupy them. Hell, again, we're not going to occupy. But we, what we want to make sure is that half million dollars is spent to make sure people are kept safe. That's right. The police have been trained to take action. The action that they're sitting on their butts in their cars, what the hell action is that? Who feels safe now because the police are across the street when they're threatening to arrest us and put us in jail? Because what we want is the nation to know. Mental health is an issue that must not go away. We all have the opportunity to touch someone's lives and it is our job, not mine, it is our job to make sure the administrators that we pay to take care of us do just that. Aldermen get a cost of living raise on a part-time job. Now, I don't know about any of you, but I've had part-time jobs. I never got a cost of living raise. That's it's nice. called pimping. <laughs> I don't like being pimped. The mayor is pimping me all of the aldermen. The aldermen voted to have these clinics closed. They said that they had to because they didn't have the money. We proved in a 20-page report that we published and presented to every alderman that they were losing more, they would lose money. The city of Chicago is planning to give away some of their finest buildings to private providers. In addition to which, they are going to subsidize their income. The city of Chicago has written grants for up to $20 million to make sure all of those private providers are able to make a good living and to live a healthy and safe life. What's going to happen to you? The private providers are also have the opportunity to deny services to you if you have Medicaid or Medicare because those are, those are slow payers. When they don't have the money to treat you, they're going to get rid of you. The city of Chicago right now is supposed those clinics are supposed to be free. They have begun charging people $40 to register. $40 to be evaluated by a psychiatrist and $40 to see a therapist. That's $120. What will happen is we know that people are now leaving because they can't afford the $120. What the city's plan to do is say these clinics are not being used, they should be closed. Also, it is dependent on the clinic's administrator whether or not they want to give assistance to the poor. They have been told not to give assistance to the poor. So the clinics are going to close because they are not used by the poor. The clinics are also being told that the only people they can treat are the poor that have no insurance. And so they were going to take the burden off the private providers. However, the private providers are going to be subsidized with that $20 million and given free buildings. The poor and the public health clinics will not provide assistance to the poor. The poor are going to have to pay $120. That's initially. Then you'll just pay a measly $40 after you've paid to register, been evaluated, and seen your therapist. Then every time you go, you'll pay $40. But if I'm broke, I've lost my job, I've lost my house. If I'm broke, where the hell will I go? 
I should beat you across the head because I think you've got money. Then once I get to jail, my children have nowhere to go. They sure don't. I just have two quick announcements for everybody. Uh, one is that even though the cops have said that they are threatening arrest and eviction from this land, even though we know that's unlawful because the owner of this property has not issued a complaint for us to move off of this property, despite that fact, they have already issued the warning that they have to issue before they arrest anybody. So if we see cops approaching, everybody should know that they don't have to issue another warning to arrest. So what we're asking is people who do not want to be arrested to simply walk to the corner of 63rd and Woodlawn and we're going to set up a picket in solidarity. So we're asking that you not leave the site, that we sell the presence. There's absolutely nothing they can do to arrest you for walking in a circle on the sidewalk of 63rd and Woodlawn. So we're asking for people who aren't willing to be arrested to do that. If you are, we're asking that you stay on the site. Yeah, you want us to do that? Not right now. Not right now. No, I mean, when? Only if they start walking yeah. up with the ties and all that, right? Right now there's only one car. They're nowhere near. We have, you know, we're nowhere near that. Um, the other announcement is that uh, maybe less important, maybe more important, is that we have access to bathrooms, and we're going to be taking people to the bathroom at 8.45 and at 9.15. We're asking people to meet under the stealing, uh, our healing tent at that time, and you can be taken to the bathroom. So meet us under the tent at those times. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. We shall overcome, 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 we to try to bring single health care. And I consider this, and we consider this, just the beginning of a fight for health care for all. That's There's right. a health care yes. for human rights. We should not be out here begging for this, the health care clinics to be open for mental health, particularly at a time in this nation where people in a really bad way. They're the veterans coming home. They're people without houses. They're people without medical care. They're people without jobs. And the idiots, not to mention the immoral people, are trying to say that, well, we don't need public health clinics. Who gives a damn about the public? That the important thing is people can pay for their health care. The important thing is some people will get a profit for health care. It's a profitable industry. And I find it really, really, really disgusting for this to be taking place. At this time, if we had health care for all, if we had public health care, then we would not have to be fighting for this because people would say, we got to put more people, more people into the health care system. We have to open up more clinics because that's what's needed at this particular moment in time. So I want us to see this as, a, as part of a larger battle, that even if we get these clinics open, there's going to be more that we're going to have to do. Challenge. Here. Yes. Here's the challenge. Come on right here. It's where's the money? 
We want our money. It don't have to do just with the clinic. It has to do with everything. Where's the money? Now look here. I don't have it. You got it? Where's the money? Hold on. The rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. That's right. Hold on a minute. You're not rich. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me handle this. Come on, sir. Right. Here we go again. Same old rub. Oh, you don't deserve it. No health clinic. No, we don't deserve that. We need multiples. More than one. No, this is not Star Trek. Okay, beat me up, Scotty. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. What she was talking about, the larger picture. You see, we bringing out brothers like this, who they concerned about the issues. And, they, and we, we have to look at the services are being cut, the people are losing their jobs because there's no services for them to provide, and next they're coming after the SSI checks because you don't meet the criteria because the dis services have been disrupted. This started way back from the impact of the global economy, back when Ron was chief of staff, back when William Daly was head of commerce and they voted in the NAFTA, in the GATT agreement. They knew all these things was going to have a trickling effect on America. And now we're feeling it. We're feeling it because we're losing jobs. We're losing businesses. Our government is in a deficit where we have to borrow money from other countries. And now we're feeling it. And now we're mobilizing. And we're going to mobilize today, tomorrow. NATO's coming. That's why they stopped the GA summit. See, because this is the impact the response from the global economy. And you guys started it, so you guys should fix it. We didn't lost our jobs, we didn't lost our manufacturing, industrial industries, and now we're losing our health insurance. We just said, you, let's come together and let's fix it. You the professional, well, let's look at this structural deficit, let's open up the budget to transparency and accountability. That's what we need to do. But we need to stop this violence. These kids, again, I must say, are going to need therapy. They do need some therapy. Their parents need therapy. Hell, you need therapy. <laughs> you probably got a private therapist. I'm not ashamed to say I have a mental illness. I'm walking on my way to the clinic, and my buddies with bottles in their hand. Oh, he's crazy. I'm getting help. We need help. Thank you. Help is not necessary. Go help.
think it's put attention to the media and not really pointing fingers at the media, even though they take things out of context and represent uh, the people that are the conflict of interest of uh, their sponsors. But uh, really what's going on is displacing the real problems and escalating the issues which escalate so, uh, 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 the misrepresentation of what's really going on and uh, creating more disturbances and more instability to escalate even greater threats against humanity. And that's basically just all I have to say at this point. And you can take that anywhere you want to go with it. And it's a global problem. It's not just the U.S. Global! And it's in the financial sector. That's kind of where it's rooted. When I went to jail this week, the only thing I was trying to do when I went to jail and got locked up and everything, I was trying to speak and trying to to help them to understand us, to try to really look down inside of themselves, inside of their mind, inside of their heart. I wanted the mirror and everybody to remember them to think that we are not no violent people. We're not no, we are human being people. We came out here, we came, I came out here to speak and everything, let them know that hey, if you ease out there paying these police out here to do this here, lock us up, and everything. The police don't need to lock us up because this mental illness and the police thing too, you know, they need some help. The police need yes. some help. You know, they need help. And then again, if you paying the police to lock us up, it seems like you want us to be to get hurt. You seem like you don't care about us. You don't care nothing about us. If you cared, I had the heart to care about us, you wouldn't be trying to, to, to put us into jail. You should be, uh, you be trying to try to help us, support us, support the mental health. Try to uh, start being violent, it's, and it's going to be more violence. It's going to be more stuff that's out here in these streets going to happen. It's going to be, it's going to, it's, it's, you think things getting better now, and I'm standing here, and I am a live witness. You think things is going to get better, they're going to get worse. And you're saying the police locking everybody up? It's going to be more crime on crime. It's going to be so much stuff happening out here in these streets. It's going to be people killing people, killing people. But if we can reach out, and if the miracle reach out and help us, we can help other people to try to save and help other ones and everything, to help put them on the right track, go get some help, and uh, try to get some help in their head and mind and stuff like this. I mean, you know, they can really help us, you know. I had, the, I had some beautiful therapist people over here at this clinic that has supported, has helped me, has helped me to go to that, put me in the right directions, has supported me to make, help me to do right, so I can function right, so I can, I can take care of my grandbaby, so I can teach him. He said that he's there for the kids, but we, he, we need him to understand that if your parents have some mental illness problems or something like this here, I need that clinic open so that I can support myself and take care of myself so that I can take care of this little one right here and help him to grow up and be right and make something of his life and everything. Yes. And Mayor, I got a little, I got a little three words for you. And excuse my language for all of y'all. And this Don't comes cuss. from, this comes from everybody. Words. Kiss my look. <laughs> Look, I, Grandmama didn't teach you to say that. Grandmama didn't teach you that. I teach you better than that. You know? But you know what? Anytime a baby gonna say something like this and he see what's going on, you know, it's wrong. What you see here? You taking the you kids. Don't, you don't and just see kids one part. Going wrong because you messing up and they mind up and everything. You don't need for kids, babies, head to be destroyed. You see a coalition of the same people who elected Barack Obama, the university students. They're here supporting us. Some of them may not have a mental illness, but they see mental illness in the street, and they care. These are the same people that initiated the coalition that addressed the war in Iraq. And they're here addressing this issue now. 
Mobilization is in full force. Let's help each other.